call me an audiologist. Others call me a hearing nerd. Being human with hearing loss is like my superpower. As a hearing doctor, I get to help people hear their best while learning about the mysteries of hearing. humans welcome back to dr. Rose helps you here I'm Stephanie Rose and I'm an audiologist today I'm going to show you a couple of tricks about what happens when your hearing aid stops working so um, the first thing I wanted to go over first of all is thank you so much to all of my subscribers out there definitely growing the channel and I'm so happy that you guys are out there to support me and that you like my videos if you watch this video and you haven't yet hit the subscribe button go ahead and hit that and then ring the bell if you want to be alerted to when there's new videos okay so we have a few different hearing aids today I've got a behind the ear hearing aid an invisible in canal hearing aid and I have a demo receiver in canal hearing aid uh, and this one has a custom ear mold tip. So the first thing that I always ask is, did you change the battery? Because sometimes the battery can run out and we don't know that it happened. Um, ba hearing aids do give battery warnings. So when it's running low or when it's about to die, usually there's a chime or a music, or sometimes the hearing aids just say battery. So if you hear that, go ahead and change your battery. But if you haven't and your hearing aid stopped working, you wanna go ahead and just try to replace it. So whether you use zinc air batteries or you use like a rechargeable system, either park them back into the charger or change the battery. One thing to note with the zinc air batteries is that they have these little stickers on them and the stickers actually cover little holes that are on the battery that allow oxygen to come through and activate all those juices in there. So when you unpeel the sticker, make sure you wait two minutes before you either close the battery door or before you put it into the hearing aid altogether. That way it will have its full power and be able to turn on the hearing aid and work for as long as possible without having to change the battery. The next thing, if you've already changed the battery and the hearing aid is still not working, um, there's two ways that you can kind of troubleshoot this. Um, one would be to change the filter, the wax filter. So um, your hearing care professional probably introduced you to this and sometimes people forget, especially if you're not very waxy and it's not top of mind. Um, over time, small amounts of debris, either dead skin cells, parts of the eardrum that have shed it off, or uh, wax can get into the hearing aid receiver or speaker where the sound comes out of the hearing aid. So make sure you've tried changing that filter and about I'd say about 80% of the time, that's what it was, and someone just forgot to change their filter. The other thing that you can do, oh, I'm sorry, the next part of that is, if you see that there is a light on your charger, you can see that there's a green light there kind of blinking on the hearing aid, that means it is getting power. So it's either, it's, it's a high chance it's either a dead speaker or it just is a filter that needs to be changed. The next thing I would say, if you've changed the filter, you've changed the battery, and it's still not working, would be to give it a simple brush. Now, on these little invisible in canal hearing aids, the microphones are actually sometimes tucked inside of the battery door. So I would say open the battery door, turn the hearing aid upside down so if you're brushing debris, it kind of falls to the ground instead of in the hearing aid, and just give it a light brush around that opening to see if maybe you can dislodge any debris that's maybe covered up the microphone. Because if sound can't get in, it can't get back out. So on these types of hearing aids, you're gonna find uh, little slits and that's where you wanna brush. Uh, I find that these less often will have debris in them compared to in the ear hearing aids. And for this in the ear hearing aid, the microphones are gonna be right above the battery door most of the time. And it's good to just brush over that whole face plate. If you have a behind the ear hearing aid, the sound is sent from the receiver that's in the top part of the hearing aid all the way down the tube and into your ear through an ear mold. So sometimes 
we see sound get completely stopped by moisture bubbles that pool inside of the tube. So if moisture bubbles get inside the tube, it's gonna stop the sound. Another thing too is that if that tube gets hard, it's also going to stop some of the sound. So you do wanna see your hearing care professional for a tube change every three to six months, depending on the pH of your skin and how it interacts with that tubing. If you can't pinch it together, you definitely should have the tube changed. So one solution, I have two solutions for the moisture in the tubing. The first one would be a tube blower. So for this one, you wanna have someone show you how to do it on your device. But for something like this that has a hook with no filter, meaning no little white or green or gray thing inside there, if it's just a clear hook, the easiest way to do this is to untwist your hook, take the tube blower and start at the hook. Don't start down here because then you're gonna be blowing wax up into the tube. So you wanna start at the top and just give it, you know, I don't know, 10 to 20 squeezes. You can also come back out and just squeeze the air in, but these are made to do this. These are made to, to just continuously squeeze it. So, and you can feel the air coming out of there. Another thing too about these behind the ear hearing aids, you wanna make sure that the sound channel is clear right here where the sound comes out, where the tube meets that top tunnel. Um, and you can do that with what I call a fancy digger tool or a loop tool. So you just wanna reach in there and get any debris that you find right at the tip. Be very careful not to be too rough with this because acrylic can chip if you put something hard against it. So be real gentle, get that wax out of there if you see a little curtain and hopefully it will fix itself. Now, if you have a hook that has a filter, you can't do this method with uh, um, the tube blower. So what I suggest is to put a little bit of a Sharpie mark on the tube and on the hook itself before you take off the tubing. So you can remove the tubing from the hook and that way if you have that little mark there, you'll be able to line it up with the mark that's on the hook and then have that orientation be proper. There's 360 degrees and 359 wrong degrees to put it back on. And just being off by one or two degree, degrees on that, on that uh, tubing can definitely cause some discomfort or ear pain and have that ear mold just be slightly off. So be careful about that. The other thing, oh, I'm sorry, I meant to show you the tube blower. So you wanna stick the tube blower at the top of the tube and blow that way, give it lots and lots of air. Make sure you're feeling it out of the ear mold so that you know you've got all the debris out of there. So that's how you would to blow a tube uh, removed from the ear hook. The next part that I would suggest for behind the ear hearing aids that have tubing, you can even use this for the vents or the tunnels that run through uh, uh, in the ear hearing aids and there's a nice picture of it, but this is called Nano Clean. Um, and it's basically dental string with some fluff on it. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how to run that through a tube. This can be a little tricky depending on how curvy your ear canal is, but you can purchase this material from your hearing care professional or you can get it on Amazon and it's called Nano Clean. So here's that tube again. I'm gonna feed it from the top and then I'm gonna straighten out I'm straightening out the tubing so that this will travel through nicely. And now it's coming out the other end. And what's going to happen is when I pull this string through, that fluff, that fluffy part of the string is going to really clean that tubing and get all of the wax and debris. And I kind of will rotate it as I'm pulling to kind of get any wax that's kind of stuck at the, at the tip here. So, one should be enough, one time through should be enough. And this is a single use type product because if we have any germs or bacteria in there, we don't wanna keep using that in our tube. So just toss it um, and move on to the next string. They come with you know, uh, uh, lots and lots in like a little rectangular cardboard package. This is just a little sample. But there it is again, one more time, Nano Clean. Okay, so, You've changed your battery, you've changed your filter, you've cleared all the wax from your tubing and the moisture, uh, you've, you've, trouble, you've done some troubleshooting. The last thing that you can kind of do at home 
um, is to put your hearing aid in a moisture kit. So sometimes if it's the hot summer months, you've been wearing it while you're out walking or you're just perspiring a little more, these little silica beads are a great way to clear the hearing aid of any moisture that's building up on the inside of it that might stop the sound. So to do that, you do wanna make sure that you're opening your battery doors all the way, whether it's a in the ear or behind the ear. You wanna remove the plastic from the pouch and then you set this with the open battery on top of the silica beads. If you want to do the best moisture management possible, I recommend you take out the battery. If this is something you're doing every night as a routine, you don't perspire very much and you haven't had any problems with moisture, you can leave the battery in. Just make sure that door is nice and open. If the battery door is slightly closed, the hearing aid could turn on. You'll have some whistling happening that you may or may not hear uh, and you won't have as long of a battery life. The other uh, alternative, if you have a rechargeable hearing aid and you can't use something like that, I love these little moisture discs. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So they're little silica beads inside, inside of this little disc. And this brand, and it doesn't really have a brand because it's for hearing care professionals, um, this brand has a refreshable instruction. So not all of them can be placed in the microwave because once they're full of moisture, they turn a whitish color, but not all of these can be placed in the microwave, but I love this brand because you get extra life out of it, and there's no reason to be throwing these in the earth if we don't have to. So, with these hearing aids, you can stick that little disc in there, close the lid, and it does your moisture management at night. These were first seen with the Phonak line of rechargeables because they have a very thoughtful little lid that has a little spot for these things. And here is where it goes. It goes inside of here, and then you just tuck that little pocket there. Um, so don't forget you have that if you have this kind of Phonak charger. And then I'll just show you there. Those beads are really light in color, and then these are nice and orange. So when it gets to this, you either need to toss it or microwave it and follow the instructions. Every microwave is different, so keep your eye on it. Um, you can purchase the single throwaway ones by Phonak um, on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description for you if you are interested in getting these. Um, they also have uh, moisture tubs like this on Amazon as well, and I'll find a decent one and put it on there. Some people make so much moisture and have so many problems with their hearing aids not functioning because they're just warm, moist humans uh, that they have to do more sophisticated moisture management. Um, there's the dry lux, there's dry bricks, um, zephyrs that use dry bricks and air and, and a mixture of uh, UVC lights and all kinds of things that get real fancy up into the $100 range for some. So those are options that I go to last if we have you know, some major issues. People who have cochlear implants automatically get those really nice zephyrs that have the dry bricks and the air and all that stuff I just described. So um, it's very important that they keep their processors running properly and the processor is against the head with a, a coil and a magnet. So it's, it's got a little more moisture management going on there. Okay, um, just on a side note, the very last thing I wanna talk about is this uh, Audiologist Choice Hearing Aid Spray. It used to be called Ear Mold Spray. So just know the newer ones are hearing aid spray. Um, they are great for cleaning hearing aids. They do not have any rubbing alcohol in them, so they are a non-alcohol based uh, uh, cleaning detergent for hearing aids. You can use them on acrylic, you can use it on silicone. It won't hurt the silicone and make it dry and brittle like an alcohol would. And then also for those of you who are wearing face masks right now during the pandemic, you're touching your ears, your hearing aid, your face mask. You do wanna sanitize your shells um, on a day on, on a day that you've been out in public. So um, if you do that, you wanna spray a tissue and then you wanna wrap the hearing aid. Take this one. You wanna wrap the hearing aid kind of around it, like where it was touching your ear and possibly your face loops. Just be very careful you're not covering up the little slits for the microphone. And then you wanna saturate that for three minutes According to the Environmental Protection Agency, this will kill COVID-19. Uh, and I will put another link for the hearing aid spray in the description. I wanted to add that if you try these tips and tricks in this video today and you still can't get your hearing aid to work, 
there could be a couple of things going on. One, it could be a problem with the device. So definitely get to your audiologist or hearing care professional to make sure that they can troubleshoot it and try to fix it in-house first. And then if they can't, they'll send it out to the manufacturer so the manufacturer can refurbish it, clean it up, send it back. Once it gets back, we have to program it with your settings, but we also have to check to make sure it didn't get kicked around in the mail and it's operating at its correct functionality. That's through electroacoustic analysis, or EAA for short. So we check it for distortion, proper outputs, and to make sure it's overall going to be safe for your ear once you get it back from the maker. The other thing we need to check for is wax in your ear. Sometimes it's just a simple ball of wax that's in the person's ear and they can't hear through it. So you definitely need to have an ear exam and make sure you hit all those bases uh, to get your hearing aids working again. If someone does need me to send it out to the maker, I do offer loaner hearing aids so that the patients are never without sound. So that was my two cents about what to do if all of these trip tips and tricks don't work. Okay, so that was the video on what to do if your hearing aid stops working. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for subscribing. Please stay well out there and I'll see you in the next video where I teach you what I do if your hearing aid stops working.